Good morning. It's nice to have you with us this morning to worship. And our call to worship this morning is actually a chorus. And the words of that chorus are these. As we gather, may your spirit move within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We will be blessed because we came. this morning is taken from the book of Romans uh, chapter 13 and I'll be reading the first five verses and then from 8 to 10 and it says let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are appointed by God therefore whoever resists the, the authority resists the ordinance of God and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For God, he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister an avenger to, exec, to execute wrath on those who practice evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. And then we go down to verse 8. And it says, Owe to no one anything 
except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. began 2020, what lay ahead for us. And it wasn't long where we, before we found ourselves in the midst of COVID-19, a pandemic, something that I'd never heard of really. I, I never lived through such a thing. My parents probably and grandparents never have been through a time such as this. But it came and we're in the midst of it now. And we have so much information given to us. If we listen to the news, we, we have so much uh, information and, and so many things. And we're told to do this or, or we can't do that. And sometimes it's hard for us to get a hold of it or a handle on it. We find very often that we, we are afraid. It causes us to be nervous. We find that the people are so really, really afraid of what is happening to them. And they don't know what to do. And I was thinking about our Lord Jesus. Because I want to share with you this morning about our freedom as Christians. The Word of God tells us in John's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And we know the truth because Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have freedom. We are free in Christ. But what does that freedom allow us to do? What does it actually allow us to do? We have to stop and think about that. I had a gentleman, actually a wonderful brother of God, as was speaking to us last week or a week ago, saw him again last week actually, and he was telling us, you don't have to wear your masks. And I didn't have time to really have a conversation too much with him, but I hope to do that this coming week. But I thought of him saying that. You see, there are Christians that believe that we live under a higher power. In other words, in a sense, they're saying, I take my orders from the Lord Jesus. I don't have to obey what I'm told. I am free in Christ. 
But what are we free to do? What are Christians free to do? We know that Jesus also said, you shall know the truth, John 8, 36. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So I come again, what are we free to do? We are free to choose to do that which is good. If we don't know what we're to do, we look at Jesus. We look to the word of God for the answers, because the answers are there. I think of our Lord Jesus, and we know that the word of God tells us and maybe you'd like to say it with me, John 3, 16. And then if you know John 16 and the 17th verse, say that along with me as well. Let's say it slowly and think about it, because it's a verse we know so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus came into this world to save it from its sin. So we learn from what Jesus came to do we know that he came to save us from our sin, and he did that by his death on that cross. But he came to set us free from our fears. He set us free to live for him. We, our freedom is not a license to sin, but our freedom is really is to choose. We have the freedom to choose to do what is right. And when we look at the, at the life of Jesus Christ, when we think about his life, you can read in John's Gospel, and I hope if you have your Bibles with you this morning, that you will look at these verses of Scripture. Because Jesus said, I have not come on my own authority. I have not come to do my own will. My doctrine is not my own. What is he saying? He's saying that I come to do the will of my Father. I've come to bring him, you his message. I've come to bring to you his words. And his words are words of peace. He teaches us in the scriptures, we're taught in the scriptures that we are to obey the laws of our country. We are to do that which is right and loving and caring. I know that the country doesn't get everything right. Our leaders don't get everything right. And how can they with this pandemic? They've never had anything like this hit them before. But we need to listen. Because what Christ did, he came to save us from our sin. Our leaders, our leaders are trying to save our physical lives. Think about that. Give it some thought. What they're trying to do is good. You know, when this uh, coronavirus first hit, or shortly, I should not right away, but shortly after it hit. We had some wonderful things that people were doing. They were reaching out to their neighbor. They were trying to help their neighbor. They were trying to encourage their neighbor. It was wonderful. They had messages on the windows. They were saying to the essential care workers, you are our heroes. Well, if they are our heroes, if we really care, we need to do what one doctor said that I heard on the television. He said, I'm grateful. I thank you for those signs. I thank you for those words of encouragement. But how best can you help us if we are your heroes? 
is to do that which is right, to wear those masks, to distance yourself, to wash your hands, to do these things. This is what will help us. This is how you can aid us in our fight against this virus. Jesus wants us to follow his example. Every word that Jesus spoke was given to him from the Father. When I realized that one day, I thought to myself, if Jesus, the Son of God, only spoke the words that his Father gave him to speak, think about that. If he said nothing on his own, and he didn't, I can give you some of these scriptures to show you that. If you would like, I'd like you to turn with me to John's Gospel. If you go to John's Gospel right now, I'd like you to look at chapter 12, John chapter 12. And we're look, going to look at verse 49 and 50. John 12. I'm getting it. That gives you a chance to get there too. John 12. 49 and 50, look at it closely, listen as I, I read it to you if you don't have a Bible, and this is what it, it says there, for I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that he, his commandment is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. He spoke the words the Father gave him to speak. They were not even his own words. He said, the doctrine is not mine, but my Father's. If you would like to look back at John's Gospel, chapter 8, go to John's Gospel, chapter 8, and have a look at verse 26, first of all. The words of Jesus. He said, I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. The very words that Jesus spoke, God's words, the words of his father, not even his own words. Yes. Look at the same chapter, just go down to verse 28. 28 to 30. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father taught me, I speak these things, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. If this is true for Jesus, my dear friends, this has to be true for me. It has to be when I share the word of God. I say in my prayers, oh God, Give me your word. You said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. I don't want to speak the words of, of mine. I want to speak the words the Father gives me to speak. If that was true for Jesus and he is God, then I want to speak the truth, the words that Jesus has for us to know and to believe and to live. So Jesus is the word of God. In the first chapter of John, and the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and nothing was made that was made without him. And then in the 14th verse of that first chapter, we're told that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, as of the only begotten of the Father, 
full of grace and truth. So let's think about it. Sent by the Father, his Father's message. It's actually literally the, the words the Father gave him to speak. And then he lived it. Jesus Christ is the living word. He lived it. He lived what he taught. He practiced sometimes what we say, what we preach. We are to practice what we preach. We are to walk the talk. This is what Jesus did. And so when I look at the life of Jesus, and when I think of this COVID, and when I think, what am I supposed to do? Do I listen to the man that says I don't have to wear the mask? Or do I obey the, my, really what the leaders of my country have told me that I'm to do? Jesus lived a life that was sacrificial. He didn't come to please himself. He came to bring the truth. He came to serve. He said, I didn't come to, to be served, but to serve. And I believe with all my heart, my dear friends, that as difficult as it may be, I don't like these masks. <laughs> I want to be totally honest with you. I don't like them. It's not easy. It's very difficult. If they're hot, <laughs> my mask always seems to come right under my eyes, and it's difficult to see. I could say I don't have to wear it because I'm asthmatic, right on my medical bracelet. But I'm not having an asthma attack, haven't for a long time. I'm going to wear my mask because I believe that's what Jesus wants me to do. I want to help those first responders. I want to help those doctors and nurses. My own family are, are in that group. My daughter Darlin and, and her granddaughters were, were working in a nursing home. And so it, it's, it's not easy. We got to care, we got to sacrifice. We have to do it God's way. Do you think Jesus would wear a mask if he was still here in the flesh today? I believe he would. I believe he would. Because it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. We mustn't be selfish. We mustn't just think, oh, I, I'm, I live under high power. I do. You do if you love Jesus. But he, our freedom is to do and choose that which is right in honoring him, in obeying him. He's, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. We are his representatives. May they see in us the living Jesus. A chorus came to my mind when I was preparing this. I thought of Jesus when he said, not my will, Father, but thine be done. I'll just give you the words of this chorus. It says, I want God's way to be my way as I journey here below. For there is no other highway that the child of God should know. Though the way be dark and rough, if he leads me, tis enough. I want God's way to be my way every day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, May we choose to walk in your steps. May we choose to speak the words, O oh God, that you give us. May we choose, O oh God, to follow your lead and to live a life, O oh God, for the betterment of our brothers and sisters in Christ and for the betterment of the whole world. 
Father, I pray, we pray today for those who are serving. We pray for those who actually, families of those who have died of COVID. We pray for the doctors and the nurses. We pray for them, that you will bring them through this. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give us the grace and the strength and the courage, O oh God, no matter what lies ahead, whatever's before us, Lord, to deal with your way. That God's way will be up my way. That it will. Because that is pleasing and right in his sight. Bless you. Bless us all. And keep us faithful to him, whatever's ahead. In Jesus' precious name, amen.